Ian Robson here from MyFarmEducation.ca. Uh, today I want to talk about something that is uh, an interesting topic I've been thinking about for the last little while. It's a hay farm. Uh, what I mean is starting just a hay farm, so only do hay. Now I was able to get back to my in-laws farm not too long ago and had a really good discussion with my father-in-law about this. He was the one who actually brought it up. And the interesting thing was is the fact that you don't actually need a whole lot to get started with this particular thing. I mean, like in reality, all you really need is a, a few pieces of equipment. You need a couple, a, one tractor at least, preferably two. Uh, you need some sort of mower. You need some sort of baler. That's it. You can get away with not having a tether and not having a rake, although those are nice things to have. That's all you really need. You can build your own seeder if you need to, or you can contract that out because you wouldn't need to seed every single year like you would with a regular cash crop. You could seed uh, once every three years or once every five years, depending on what type of mix of seed you use for hay. Now, the initial capital you would need for those few pieces of equipment wouldn't be very much. You, you know, we gauged it to be around. $50,000. These would all be used things, not new ones, of course. So it'd be around $50,000. Now, is that a lot of money? No. Um, is it a lot of money for some? Yes. But it's definitely a way of getting started into farming. Now, of course, you would need a farm as well. Uh, we were talking about roughly uh, starting with 50 acres or 100 acres, 100 acre farm, some on that area. Now, the thing you need to take into consideration is the fact that you would need to have um, something like lots of horse farmers around in order to sell the hay. And we were gauging roughly about 450 per small square bale uh, specifically. We weren't doing rounds at all at this point, it was just small square bales because they're, they're easier for people to handle um, for that type of thing. Oh, the other thing we talked about was uh, getting a bale wagon as well, like a, an auto stacker or something that picks up the bale off the field so you don't have to do it yourself. And that all would also allow you to drop them off assuming they're relatively close to your position as well. Now, I thought it was kind of a cool idea, like I said before, because it doesn't take a whole lot to get started. Now, you would need, you know, at least 50 acres of land, you would need the equipment to get started, and you would need to have the market. And the, probably the most important thing about that is having the market available to you, because if you grow all this hay and there's no one around who's going to buy it, um, it's not going to work out very well. But it's definitely an interesting concept, because to get started there would be a lot less than getting started in, let's say, growing soybeans, for example. Now, of course, the potential to, uh, to make money is more in soybeans, but it's also more risk as well. So there's that thing to think about as well. Now, here's some, here's some thoughts that came to mind when I was thinking about this. You could potentially rent the equipment and not buy it. So the initial capital will be lower, and then if it didn't work out for whatever reason, you can just return the rented equipment, no problems. So you could do that with a tractor, and you could do that with the other equipment as well. So that was something that came to mind. The other thing along the same lines is you don't necessarily need to buy the property per se, you could just rent it. Uh, of course, you would need to do it you need to rent a property from somebody you know or trust to a certain extent because you know if you put the seed down and then they want the land back after a year that's not going to work out it's not going to be a really good return on investment for you so ideally you'd be able to own the land of some sort of or be very you know know somebody who's willing to give it to you sort of thing and all you could do is you could rent or lease the land somehow and then use that and then what that would do is it would give you a chance to feel, get a feel for what it's like in farming. You know, this would be like a new farmer type of situation. So you could, you know, try it out and see if it's, see if it's right for you. It would all allow you to get connections with people. It would allow you to understand how to use some of the equipment. Um, you know, give you a chance to know how to use it a bit better than you already do. Alternatively, you, you don't necessarily have to start this all for yourself. But you could, you know, help somebody else out in this situation as well. Now, as I mentioned, we were uh, we gauged around 450 per small square bale. So roughly, uh, we were gauging. I think it was uh, 180 bales all together for first and second cut, something along those lines, of small squares, something like that. And if you were to sell those at 450 a piece. Uh, let me just do the math here. So that's 450 times 180. Um, so that would be $810, which I think is not right for some reason, but 
it's just a way of getting getting about it. Let me just do some math again here in one sec. I think we figured out not to be that. So I think we thought it was thirty thousand dollars you would make divided by four fifty. So yeah, you'd be pushing out six thousand bales. Somewhere in that area. So it must have been something a bit different. So that's you know, that can give you an idea. So six thousand small squares really isn't that much. So for example, my in laws, they have they did about seventy acres. And they did not have all small squares. They did uh, a lot of round bales this year. But in small squares, they got uh, at least, I think it was around 25 to 2,500 to 3,000 bales. And it wasn't all small squares, remember. So if they were to put it all into small squares, they could easily bump that number up a lot more because they, d they did rounds this year instead of small squares. So that's just a way of thinking about a different way of thinking about how you can do uh, starting a, start a new farm as opposed to going straight into cash crops or straight into animals. It's a different kind of farm you could start. Anyways, those are just some thoughts about that. Again, sorry about the little math problem at the end there, but you know, it gives you an idea of what what you could be looking at. Remember, you need to have a viable market for this type of situation because you can't sell hay everywhere, and you may not get a good price for it everywhere. But horse farmers are particularly good when it comes to paying out money for good hay. Um, if it's not very good hay, then you're not going to get a good price, obviously, and you probably won't be making the same amount of money. Anyways, those are just some thoughts. My name is Ian Robson from myfarmeducation.ca. Have yourselves a good day.